What is up, hotties? Welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined as always by my two favorite co-hosts of all time in Matthew Spinauer and Theo Ash. We have a great episode planned for you all today as we are going to break down what has been a very eventful and for some of us painful week 10 of NFL football. But before we get into that, Matt, Theo, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I uh, went to the UC game on Friday night. Uh, and they, they hung on for a, a close win, which is always nice. Winning streak at home up to 32 games. W. One of the best ever. Someone recognized me there and, and gave me a shot. So shout nice. out to them. What was it a shot of? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look at it that closely. Good Absinthe, God. apparently. <laughs> Who knows? But shout out to, shout out to that guy. I was I was in Cincy Friday night and I happened to look up I was out to dinner with my girlfriend and I happened to look up at the TV and I saw the score was like two to five. And I was like, what are we, I was like, what are we doing out here, Todd? Yeah, Ben Bryant ran backwards into his own end zone for a, <laughs> a terrible, terrible safety. Um But they, they hung on for the win. You were you were in Cincinnati. Yeah. I don't know. 45 minutes. I guess that's close enough to where it's not like, hey, Matthew, I'm in Cincinnati for when you're in Cincinnati. But if it was like an hour <laughs> and a half, then you'd have to be like, yeah, no, we, 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 we just came. On, we just we just we just went to dinner and then we went back. But really, I think that's even crazier. You'd think so. It's a 45, 45 minute drive. Minutes. It's a 50 minute drive. You went we, for dinner. You drove at pre- night pretty much the whole way then. I mean, it was a pretty nice restaurant. 45 minutes. I can get that. Though. That's no. like from my there, that's like no, from you, my hometown you don't, you don't to the Twin Matt. Cities. You don't understand. There's like no restaurant to just like where, where I can understand I, that. I can understand that. From my no, from my hometown in town. rural Minnesota, <laughs> like if you wanted to go to a nice meal at like yeah. y- you're not going to go to Northfield, you'd have to drive like 45 minutes into the city. I right. I would understand that not all the time <laughs> i wouldn't like frequent a, a bar 45 minutes away but no i would i would go to a nice a nice That's dinner 45 much. minutes away. No, it's, it's, it's like, it's like for, once for it's like once a no month way. we will like go to dinner in Cincinnati. I don't think that's crazy. Matt, are you one of those people who think like a 30 minute drive is like a long ways? Yes. It's like, oh, <laughs> you are? I know. I know no. it's like not a popular opinion. People are like, oh, how could you think that? It, it is. It's annoying. I don't like driving. Okay. <laughs> I think that's I valid. Did, it's boring. I strongly disagree with you there. I str- like a 30 minute drive is, is easy. Easy. 45 minute no, is you like are, You are. Mo- you should be a trucker, man. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Theo, I could Maybe see I, Theo being a trucker. <laughs> I, I really yeah. could. I think that, I think that would be, I'd really I'm not a, a very trucker. good driver. God bless him, man. It's, I, I could not, I couldn't handle it for one day. I cannot stand <laughs> driving. I'm not a very good driver. You wouldn't, you don't want me on the roads. I, I have been my my big dilemma has been do I get a pet? This is this has been my, what has Ooh. been bouncing around my head recently is get? like I would love a dog, but my apartment is too small for a dog and it's a lot. But there's a bloodhound rescue and I could get oh like a God. bloodhound, which would be sick. It would be right? sick, but like that's <laughs> Do you is there any like is there a park nearby that you could frequent? Oh yeah. I mean, okay. I don't do anything except for stay home. So, like, I could give yeah. this dog plenty of attention and give it a go, like, bring it places and go for walks. Like, I'm not concerned about, like, the amount of attention I can give it. I'm concerned about my living quarters being too small for a dog and to yeah. just, like, it, it not, I have random roommates and stuff like that. So, a dog's probably not the best idea. So, I'm thinking about a chameleon. Because Pet Petco is right across the street from me, and I go, just go in there and I like walk around, and you can get a chameleon for like sixty bucks. That's not, not that, that much. Mo- they're not like that bad. expensive, not and that I'm bad. like a sixty dollar chameleon. Like, might I might have to pull the trigger. So, so are, that's what are you I've leaning been. towards a pet that you can hold still? Like, is that? I'm just leaning towards something sick, you know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I I'm, I I'm very, I'm very pro like fish tank. Get some goldfish. Matt's fish tank. I am a huge fan. If you got some fish, we just in there, we just added you actually got snails. new addition. We got a loach. You got a loach. Uh, I like loaches. <laughs> we got a loach. 
Okay. So that's what I'm comments. Leave a leave an opinion on the comment on what kind of reptile I should think about getting. No guarantees, but that's that's get a komodo that, dragon. Been, you could you could be like a spider guy. Have you thought about this? You get like a big spider. Theo, if you become a spider guy, like we're not cool. <laughs> you got to be able to I handle don't... spiders a little bit better, dude. Nah. Like you gotta get get a half full water bottle and just chuck it at them. Actually, I went to my laundry Tarantulas room the live other day. Here. They just they live, live here. Oh, just go like couch head. one then. <laughs> Easy <laughs> money. What? <laughs> you just nah, be nah. And then and then think about how dope it could be. Like people come over, they're like, "Oh, where did you get your tarantula?" Caught him. Wild <laughs> tarantula. I got him. Nah, dog. He, cho- like... he chose me actually. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> I think it's safe to say I spend more time than the average person watching and breaking down film. I mean, sometimes I'll stay up all night just breaking down every little aspect of a quarterback's throwing mechanics. With that being said, sometimes I need a solid cup of joe to keep me going all through the night. So let me tell you about Trade Coffee. It's a coffee subscription service unlike anything you've tried before because they partner with the top independent roasters to freshly serve and send the best coffees in the country direct to your home on your preferred schedule. The coffee I get from Trade is so good, I can't believe how much I like what they pick for me. And their team actually worked with us to create our own custom collection, which is great for me because I don't have to settle with just any average cup of joe when I'm up late in those film sessions. If you're like me and want your coffee to taste like a perfectly thrown goal line fade, go check out my collection at Trade. And what if I got isn't up your alley, don't worry. Trade will have whatever it is you want. You can shop their most popular coffees by roast or flavor profile, or you can take their coffee quiz and get expertly matched with coffees you'll love. You've got nothing to lose because Trade guarantees you will love your first bag. And if not, they'll work with you to replace it for free. So if you want to support small businesses and brew the best cup of coffee you've ever made at home, it's time to try Trade Coffee. Right now, Trade is offering our listeners a total of $30 off your first order plus free shipping at drinktrade.com slash stay hot. That's drinktrade.com slash stay hot for $30 off your subscription to the best coffees in the country. Let's talk about this game. Let's talk about some football. Let's talk about... Let us know in the comments, are you cool with spiders? (laughs) Let's talk about some football. Starting off with what might have been the game of the year, Vikings and Bills, in which... Both Steph, Stefan Diggs was like, okay, I'm going to have the catch of the week. And then Justin Jefferson retaliated with, <laughs> I'm going to have the catch of like the greatest catch of all time. Um, <laughs> it was up there, man. He played an up there, absolutely man. ridiculous game. <laughs> I saw that stat from Next Gen Sports that you were talking about on your TikTok. I believe it. On that one drive, too, he had three For unbelievable like three. catches. I believe that, like, yeah. Who, who's like a good wide receiver? I don't want to call anyone out, but like a good receiver is going like oh for three on those, man. Those are yeah. r- maybe, maybe they get one, but like those are ridiculous catches. And some of the Kirk Cousins balls were good. Some of them were just like Justin Jefferson down there somewhere. And it's not <laughs> a bad strategy. It's not. It's not no. a bad strategy. It's not. A, dude, the, the one hander is, was my brain glitched. I. <laughs> Watched it, and I was like, ah, oh, I got picked, game over. And all the Vikings, there's all the Vikings are swarming on the sideline, like, oh my God, oh my God. I'm like, man, the Bills are hyped about this. Like, of course they are. They just won the game. And then I like looked and I squinted and I could see purple helmets and the Vikings players all celebrating. But I was like, why are yeah, I still didn't put it together? I was like, why are they yeah. celebrating? Are they like mad? Did they see a penalty? And then I saw the replay. I'm like, he caught that. That was caught that, that was shit. in insane that was insane and from the very first drive when they went up 7-0 he had that third i think it was third down and long where he ran like inside settled down caught the pass it was good coverage and then like pirouetted and then stiff armed Mm. a guy and like picked up 25 yards or whatever it was that way and then the fade which he like caught a contested catch on a dude and it's like oh jefferson like what a what a drive. And that was like his third best drive, his second or third best drive of the game. It, 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 it's Just almost like everything around earth. him moves in slow motion. It's he makes it all look so easy. Like that the one handed catch is is mostly impressive. It doesn't bobble. That's what's crazy. Is he just snags it, steals I it thought, from a defender thought, with one hand and is like falling down and just holds it. And I'm like, you no human being is doing that. I thought for sure it would not be a catch on the replay. 
I yeah. saw that. I'm like, there's no, that's got to be like it bobbled at the wrong time and, mm. and touched the ground. Nope. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. No. He, he deserves so a ton of a ton of flowers for the way that he played. I also think um Brian O'Neill and Christian Darisaw, the tackles for Minnesota, deserve a lot of credit. Ed Ingram, the guard, is played a nightmare game. He was a disaster in the middle of the offense for them. And they were in a lot of fourth and shorts, fourth and goals, like third and goals and power situations. And they resorted to passing. They resorted to the end around to KJ Osborne, who broke two tackles and picked up the first a massive play. That was, you know, easy to get overlooked because of all the other crazy shit that happened in that game. But KJ Osborne picking up that fourth and one. But I don't think the Vikings were like comfortable running it up the middle because of what, Ed Ingram was, or in this case, yeah. wasn't doing, which was blocking anybody. So there was a bunch of pressure kind of up the middle all night, or and Cousins was getting tripped by Ingram. That like happened twice. I was about where to he ask, just, like, was got, he the was he the guard that tripped Kurt Cousins right. on the goal he was, line? He was sabotage. He was sab- sabotaging <laughs> the offense. So if the tackles didn't play well, I think it would have been over. And at the end of the game, to get him to third, fourth, and eighteen in the first place. uh, Vaughn got some wins on O'Neal, but for most of the game, yeah. Derisaw and Brian O'Neal were flipping their fr- flipping their hips and able to push, you know, Vaughn or whoever the other edge rusher was, like past the arc and giving Cousins time to to make throws. His first pick to um to KJ Osborne was a great rep from the tackles and he had all day to throw. I don't know why his accuracy was so bad on that throw. He just completely missed Osborne for that pick. And in general, it seems like Cousins' accuracy has been honestly a little down this year, as good as the Vikings record is. Like it it kind of feels like Cousins has been a little bit more scattershot than he sometimes is. And he's also been kind of moving around and scrambling and creating a little bit more than he usually does, which is kind of an interesting Kirk Cousins I don't really have stats to back up the scrambling part of it, but it feels like he's creating a little bit more on his own, but he's missing some of the routine stuff a little bit more than you'd think. And that was a routine miss that he had that he, or that he missed there. So it was a, it was an interesting (laughs) Kirk Cousins game up and down, but um, yeah, I, the Vikings offense there, there are plenty of guys who, who deserve plenty of credit for, for being able to turn that thing around. And uh, Dalvin cook hit like the second fastest time of the whole season on that 81 yard play. Um, there were some big catches. I didn't think Hawkinson played a great game. There were some tough catches that he didn't come down with, but there were some also clutch third down conversions. It was, it was a total team effort from that. I mean, it was, it was, I guess maybe not a total team effort because Justin Jefferson played like that, but it wasn't all him and they couldn't have done it without, without a lot of other people right. doing the right things to, to well, get that's just how, That's, that's just football. Like someone's going to stand out, but like, you know, right. CJ Ham doesn't get that touchdown on his own. <laughs> right, 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 right. But, um, you know, the question everyone's got to be asking, what the hell is going on with the Buffalo Bills, man? And I can give you at least one thing. They're secondary, so so brutally banged up. Yes. Like, every, every starter in that secondary is out. Like, Micah Hyde, IR, Poyer was out. Um, Trey, what Trey White was out. Kyra was out. Like, like they have no, no one. <laughs> and uh, honestly, the backup cornerbacks were doing about as good of a job as you could have asked them to do. Like the coverage was not, it wasn't wide open guys all day, right? You are forcing Jefferson to make some of the craziest catches you'll ever see. Like the, the bills secondary, like, yes, they got dunked on a bunch in this game, yeah. but like f- considering the situation, like honestly, the coverage isn't even that bad. So once they get these guys back, I definitely, you definitely c- got to expect the the secondary to, to really be good and, and deep. And once you like, if you have Trey White on Justin Jefferson for any of these plays, things might go differently or things probably will go differently. So I'm not, I'm not too concerned about him for that reason, but the play of Josh Allen uh, recently, it does yeah. warrant some criticism. And I don't know if you guys have any thoughts about that. I, I definitely have something to say, but I've been talking a lot. I don't know if I have anything particular to say about it other than like that fumble at the end killed them and just a dumb, like he, I thought, 
I don't know. I, I don't think that overall he's been playing bad. I hate to be that guy, but if you take out the dumb interceptions, he was playing really well. And when the Bills got the ball in overtime, you're like, they're going to go score a touchdown. And it looked like they were going to go score a touchdown until bad interception to nobody. You know, stupid. Right. So I, I feel like with Allen, it's like, He's still just a little prone to unforced errors. And I'd like to tell you that, you know, uh, well, this is partially on his injury, but that's not how it looked to me. Maybe it was. It's hard to know exactly how much that stuff is bothering him. But like up until the point where he was, you know, throwing that last interception, I wouldn't have said that. So I feel like it's not fair to say that. The Bills, I think, got a lot of leeway last year, and Josh Allen got a lot of leeway last year for struggling against too high and making some, having some inconsistent play for stretches last year against too high the same way that Mahomes was. And Mahomes got killed for it, right, for a lot of last year. He's like, oh, they figured him out. The league, you know, he's, he's not as good as he used to be. He's not QB1 anymore. Like, Mahomes really got a lot of slander and was really in the spotlight for for struggling and, and having turnovers against those those types of looks but KC still figured uh finished with the number one offense in the league and Buffalo was like at nine or ten so Allen I think even struggled a little bit more with those and then this year in the opener against the Rams right the Rams are uh, one of the founders of just playing too high all of the time going back to the Staley days when he was defensive coordinator there and what did Josh Allen do he got the ball out in like 2.3 seconds every single time and his accuracy rate was like 96 percent in the opener and it's like well if he's going to be that accurate and play that decisively and play that smart and still be just the freak of nature that he is like bang th- that's perfect and mm-hmm. as the season right. has gone out on and over the last couple of weeks, he seems to have, you know, strayed a little bit from from that efficient play and from playing like that and just taking the easy stuff. Like even before his, his elbow injury against the Jets, there were right. two just completely like horrible interceptions and like arm or not, like you don't have to throw those. So, yeah, he just needs to calm down. It seems like he's he's playing a little bit too much hero ball. He's... You know, he's playing like someone might play Madden and just like. It's a good way to put it. It's a good way to put it. Yeah, it's I throw a ton of bad picks in Madden just because I think I could do it. Right. Because I will win most of my games against a CPU or in franchise mode or whatever. Right. Usually it goes well and usually it it results in a huge play for me. But sometimes I have a little bit too much dip on my chip and I throw a bad pick. It happens like a lot in Madden and then I'll end with the season after my franchise is done breaking the the touchdown record because I threw 80 touchdowns and 6,000 yards, but I also threw 35 picks because that's just right. the way I play Madden football. And that's like the way Josh Allen has been playing over these past couple of weeks. It's like just a couple complete brain farts, but he bailed him out of a lot of third and 16s. He bailed him out of a lot of like with his legs, uh, sacks, like wiggled mm-hmm. his way out and picked up a bunch of stuff on the ground that way. He needs to get better at it. Like I, I am a little bit concerned about it because again, in the playoffs, it's not a seven game series. You can't screw up three times and be good four times and win the series. If you have a game like that once, right, you're you're gone. So that's why I think like a guy like Brady, who is at at least kids like, very very consistent, um, has all this playoff success, and guys like Montana or. Aikman, a lot of these, you know, guys who you might say aren't as talented as, as maybe some other quarterbacks in history, but you got to be consistent come playoff time. And I want to see that from Allen. I want to see him get on it because I know he can do it. We saw it at the beginning of the season, but I want to see him string some like games together without a dumb mistake because it could totally cost them in the playoffs. And so that's where right. I'm at with them. Yeah, I think that like, even if you, I hate to say this, I feel like this sounds like I'm discrediting teams that have beaten them. But it's like, you look at all those games and it's like, I feel like unforced errors costing them a game against Miami. Oh, yeah. They could easily the be Jets. nine and zero, oh, yeah. even and against, with these errors. With 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 if they had a healthy secondary, like even with these Allen picks, they could be nine and zero oh with a healthy secondary. Right. So they're definitely still contenders. Yeah, because I mean that, they scored but, thirty today. <laughs> right, right, right. You score thirty points, you expect to win most of the time, and if you have, if you're not missing, you know the best secondary, maybe the best secondary in football. 
like that probably and could, the probably wide receiver the has the game of all time versus <laughs> right. you right like all he needs to do is not get ke- one hand odell yeah. through contact on a he doesn't catch one like, of those passes and it's a completely different game right right so i'm not too concerned about the bills in the like i'm a little concerned about the way that allen is playing now but once they get the secondary back i i still think that they're you know, in the conversation for best team in the league and they're, they're still Super Bowl favorites and all that. Uh, yeah. It just depends. Shadavius White should be back soon. He's practicing. He's not like, he's back. He was, he's, he's off I thought IR. he was going he's, to play. I thought but he, he just doesn't play on the game days. Decision. But it, it seems like he's very close. But it seemed like that this week and even last week and he didn't play either week. So I'm not totally sure what's going on. I'm not clear. So yeah. we'll see about when he comes back. But Definitely, definitely could have used him today. What about Minnesota, though? Yeah, what about the, the other team that played in this game? I mean, at, at some point, we, this is a team that we haven't really given a lot of flowers to. But, Theo, you, you said in the beginning of the year that you were very confident in this team winning the NFC North and being one of the mm-hmm. top seeds in the NFC. I mean, <laughs> their every bit is proving you right. And if it weren't for the Philadelphia Eagles right now, they would they would be the number one seed in the NFC. Right. And a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how legit they were and we we came away with the conclusion, well, they're good, but they're kind of average in a lot of areas. Like their right. passing offense isn't exactly like the best in the league and neither is their rushing offense and neither is their rushing defense or and neither is their passing defense. So, right. Like it's not <laughs> none of it is bad, but none of it is like, holy cow, we are witnessing the best unit of the year. Like when we look back at the 2022 seasons, we'll remember we'll say, man, do you remember the vikings weapons that year because Thielen was kind of being underwhelming and osborne and it wasn't so good and or he was he was fine but like Thielen being underwhelming kind of kind of killed things and they were bad against man coverage and struggling to to not struggling to win games but struggling to look dominant in games and that's kind of what you expect from super bowl contenders i did a bunch of and that's still kind of the case today that's the thing about today it is it doesn't a lot Today, of, it was a, a great win, made, but go ahead, Matt, go ahead. A, a lot of, uh, you know, they, they're just on a streak of winning one possession games. And in the NFL, one possession games are like way closer to a toss up than people think, but they've, they're, what, they're like seven and oh in one possession games this season. Yeah. And, and sometimes teams just have years like that. And it's not that I don't think they're really good. It's that I think maybe eight and one is a hair misleading about how good they are. And they, they just keep pulling it out, which is partially because they're good, but partially because they've gotten some, you know, nice breaks. Most Super Bowl winners do look better than this. And I don't want to take anything away from that. Like they are good. And I love the Hawkinson edition. And he's so much better than Irv Smith Jr. And gives him a, a good change of pace other than Jefferson. And I think he's he's come through for them in the past two weeks. With the, they, They've leaned on him head, heavily and he's picked up some big conversions and, like this game with the tackles playing well and Hawkinson and Justin Jefferson being the best wide receiver in the league this week, like looking like that all the way, no doubt about it. Like that really gets you an explosive offense that has been missing in a lot of their other weeks. But I, I wrote something down because I was just interested and I was taking some notes, but the average scoring margin, and I'm not totally sure if the website I looked at took this week into account, but this week didn't change too much. But the average scoring margin for Minnesota this year is they're winning by four. All right. They're, okay. It's a plus four. The average team that plays in the Super Bowl, their average scoring margin is eight and a half. So on the this season? is like on the season. Yes. Okay. So usually they're winning games on average by like eight points, which is a lot. And that's not something you can say for Minnesota, right? And there have been a couple teams that have made it to the Super Bowl in in Minnesota's like vicinity in terms of scoring margin. Cincinnati was at 4.5 last year. Denver, the year that Peyton was washed, but they won the Super Bowl anyway. Sorry, Matt. Was at 4.3 that w- year uh, versus Carolina's 11.5. So come on, man. Like Denver, yeah. Denver was only was only at 4.3, which is pretty close to where um, uh, Minnesota is at now. But Baltimore. Denver also had like Denver also had like the best deep one of the best defenses. Right. Yeah, we, I kind of see that times. from their team build a little bit. They just weren't going to go blow teams out. You right. Know? They weren't built. Yes, I agree that with that too. And and kind of the same deal with Baltimore. 
uh, in, in 2013 when they were averaging 4.6 yeah. as their average margin of victory uh, when they beat San Francisco. And then the worst team in terms of scoring margin to win was the Giants at 1.9 the year that this is in the, since 2010. So yeah. they were at 1.9. That was quite the upset again. And they came in as like the seven seed or six seed or something like that. And they got to the Super Bowl again. So the historical precedent for Minnesota at the moment is like, this is not quite a Super Bowl caliber team the way they're playing. And again, they're, they're not quite in that elite tier of offenses like the Eagles or the, they're a good offense, but they're not quite in that elite tier like the Eagles or the, the even still probably Buffalo at, at the peak of their powers or, you know, Miami at this point, you got to say. So there's that and their defense is around average, I would say. Like, it's not bad, but it's not anything crazy special it's it's very right. fangio-esque too high keep everything in front of you like it's not it's not bad but it's nothing like oh my god this is the defining defense of the year or anything like that so i kind of feel the same way i did before about them is i don't think they're the best team in the nfc i i don't i think the eagles are a tier above them um and I think, you know, San Francisco and even Dallas, even though they lost to Green Bay today, I think are kind of in that tier with with Minnesota um, in the NFC. And that's kind of where I'm at with them. Um, but this is, a, this is a weird year where there's not a lot of Super Bowl ca- caliber teams, right? There's not a, in these other years I'm talking about with the scoring margins, there have been more teams kind of up there in like, oh man, your, your average margin of victory is eight, nine, ten. This year, the, there's just not many of those teams at all. So it, it it's just kind of a down year across the league in terms of results. So Minnesota this year um, might be able to, to kind of buck history or buck a trend. And this is a, as good a chance as any as a as a four, you know, average margin of victory yeah. team has to win the Super Bowl. But they're not they quite get by the Eagles. They're not quite that tier one of, of contender like I view the Eagles or the Chiefs right now, maybe so. That's where I'm at with them. I don't know if you guys disagree or have anything no. else to say. I mean, I, I think you're pretty spot on. The you know one thing that uh, PFF always talked about with offensive line is like you don't need to like having a Joe Thomas is great, but if you have a, a Joe Thomas and a bunch of bad offensive linemen, you still have a bad offensive line. You would ra- you would much rather just have a bunch of average offensive linemen, and that's kind of where the Vikings are right now. They're just kind of good across the board now they're still going to get beat by people that are that have like a ton of greatness but they're going to be able to put up the same consistency over and over and over again and just kind of give you the same look and that's kind of what we keep getting week in week out right you're not really seeing a whole lot of change with this team and they just keep winning Right. They're, they're well coached and they're, they're good. They're certainly a, like a very good team at this yeah. point, like undeniably, but to say, like, I'm not ready to put them in that tier one of teams yet. If that makes sense with, I believe the chiefs and, and the Eagles at this point, the bills, it could be debated if they still belong there. Um, but I would, I would definitely bet on the bills to win the super bowl over the Vikings, even with the results today. That might seem unfair, but once the Bills get healthier, I, I think that's where right. I'm at. I agree. Yeah, but, I mean, that's also if they can get healthy. If they can um, get healthy, right. If they can get healthy. But, <clears throat> you know, we want to talk about teams that are uh, that did get kind of throttled today, less of an interesting game, the Browns and Dolphins. Which we still we didn't learn anything new with the Browns. They still I feel the worst. stronger about how I felt with them. Oh <laughs> my god, dude! They they are and you've been you've been talking about how um, Wills is like not that good of an offensive. He's tackle. not good, dude. They have like that roster is pretty far off, honestly. And I think they'll be a pretty good team once Watson gets back. I think overall that offense will be pretty good. I think the receivers have been. Not so bad, and it's just Brissett yeah. back there. But, dude, like that front, the interior defensive line, which we have been marking all year, is like one of the worst units in the NFL. Their linebackers are worse. It's, if if JOK isn't front, on the field, their, li- their linebackers are the worst unit in football. Like, I promise you, dog. <laughs> they play a team with a good left tackle, like we saw today in, in Teron Armstead, who can like do a good job on Miles Garrett. And it's like, what? 
Yeah. Like, what do they have after that? It was nothing. I swear to God, I don't have the yards per attempt number in front of me, but I think Jeff Wilson picked up eight yards every time he touched the football today. It was unbelievable. There is, there is a play that I tweeted where like, I I don't even, a giant hole opens because the, the defensive lineman gets gets twisted out of the way. And number 41, (laughs) yeah, close. And number 51, like is literally looking at this giant hole and Jeff Wilson running through it and just doesn't react. He just like, falls back into the backside gap where the the running back isn't going it's like what are you what are you no, doing tell, when i tell you the browns linebackers are the worst unit of any position group in football like I, there you have that play that you tweeted theo i have a play where i tweeted another gaping hole in the offensive line it was number it was 42 number 42 who runs up to make to make the tackle and then he just stops and then he just falls over and i'm just Miami did like not you, punt today. No, they didn't. They punt did not today. punt today. <laughs> and their success it's rate rushing the f- running the football was, I think, north of sixty percent, which is a ridiculous number uh, to like. You know, just hand the ball off, and it's going to be like you're going to stay ahead of schedule like sixty percent of the time. It may not seem like that much, but usually it's like mid forties. I, I would have said it was hundred percent, man. I know it, it doesn't even, it seems like it should have been higher <laughs> than that, but that's a, that's a very high mark for, for rushing uh, success and their, their passing right. success was, was just as high. So that the question we ask is, is Deshaun Watson going to save this team? Is this like, no, like <laughs> I, think have, it, I think it'll make a ha- big difference. But. I think so too. I mean, there is a chance that he's pretty rusty this season after, not playing for a long right. time. I mean, you saw the way that he played in preseason and it wasn't anything right. crazy. And like, man, if he, <laughs> if he doesn't get off to a hot start, he doesn't have much time to turn it around. Right. Cause the season will be over. In, in well, I we're, we're talking about like for next year, they go, they go weeks. bills next and then Buccaneers who I don't yeah. think they're going to beat. I would be, I I think you're even talking for next season. And I think the answer is like, Having Watson will turn them into a bad, good team, you know? Yeah. Well, they'll be like, it's like they'll have enough strengths to probably have a winning record and be in like contention for like maybe even a division title and that level of play. But their front seven is so bad that it's like, of course, it's going to catch up to them if they actually make the playoffs. Of course, like there's just no yeah. way they're going to get through like a, a, a playoff series. With with just because Watson is so good with with a front seven that bad, someone will expose it. Yeah, and not and not even that. Like even with Watson, like Watson will help to the point where like you'll be able to keep up with some of these high level offenses. But almost every single high level AFC team has an elite edge rusher. All of them do. The Bills have Von Miller. The Chargers have Bosa and um, Khalil. Uh, the Steelers have TJ Watt, even though you wouldn't necessarily consider them, but like you play them twice a year, right? Jed Wells can't block any of those guys, not even a little bit. They are going to line up across from Jedrick Wills every goddamn play. And, and Watson's going to face against all of these teams. Watson's going to face a ton of pressure, right? So even if we get to the playoffs, we're screwed because <laughs> we just can't block. We can't block Von Miller. Can't block. Yeah. Khalil. And it's, it's just. A disaster. I, I my my guess would be my guess is is that they have to add so much talent. Like there's just running it back is not an option, and they no. are missing a lot of picks. They're going to be crazy aggressive restructuring contracts. And they're going to be like, if we're going to win with this team, we got to do it like right now, and we got to go into free agency, and we got to hit big with a bunch of guys. That is. That is my prediction is that's what they do because I just don't see another logical way out of it other than like you, this fourth round pick must be a positive starter. He needs to be a positive (laughs) starter at linebacker from day one or we are screwed. That is not. (laughs) And that's kind of what they did this year. They said this fourth round pick, please start a defensive tackle immediately. It's like, okay. So that's, that's my prediction for what the Browns do. I think their offense is going to look very good with Watson. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. I think that you have a coach that runs a scheme with all the play action 
that is just basically guaranteed to be efficient. It's extremely rare, even when bad quarterbacks are running a heavy play action and, you know, heavy RPO or whatever it is type of system that they end up looking horrible or the numbers end up looking bad and they've got a good rushing offense. It's always tops in the league. Right. And once you add Watts into this, like, I know you don't like Jedrick Wills, but Jedrick Wills, I think, is fine. I think there's a lot of teams out there who would like to have Jedrick Wills. Is <laughs> Maybe. He a first I, could, I could just see him being a liability in a, like a late-stage playoff game, right? Fourth quarter of a playoff game, game-winning drive. I could see a strip sack off the, off the edge of the left tackle. Right, but he's not Remmers. Okay, like he's he's a good, he's a fine <laughs> okay, starter, okay, okay. and maybe you know he gets he gets as a first round pick on a good offensive line. He gets overrated, or people think of him as like a top flight starter, and he's not that. I don't think he's a complete liability, which makes what the Dolphins did today that much more impressive. I think because they made this Bradley Chubb deal because they were being forced to blitz all the time. Because they just didn't, Jalen Phillips is having a really nice year. Uh, Christian Wilkins and Sealer, they're very good defensive tackles, especially against the run. But they didn't quite have the guy who is going to, who is capable of beating a guy even when they chip him or a team even when they chip him or just torching one on ones. Like Jalen Phillips is developing into that guy, but st- they were low in the league in pressure rate and they wanted a, a legitimate star instead of Emmanuel Ogba, who unfortunately suffered an injury today. But even before right. that was was not looking very good and not looking very spry or powerful. So they went out and they got Bradley Chubb and they just dominated the trenches today. Chubb was unbelievable. He had a great sack where he just ran the arc around Wills, uh, bended, bent around the edge and and sack Brissett. He was in on several other pressures and, and run stops and whatnot. And they got plenty of pressure just rushing for, which is something that the Dolphins have not been able to do in a long time time and their defense has been getting torched these past couple weeks it's not a great defense so far but sit this was a good sign of them turning turning it around they they bottled up the run outside of that one run where where nick chubb Chubb went like hulk mode the other (laughs) the other chubb went like hulk mode and (laughs) like broke a bunch of tackles but outside of that like Uh, landon roberts and 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 company w they they were flying downhill and they were dominating a good offensive line in the trenches today. And that yeah. is because on top of the, on top of the high flying ability that, that Hill and Waddle and have, and on top of the, the scheme that, um, that McDaniel has, and on top of how accurate Tua has been like their, the trenches were a little bit of a weak spot for them. And today on both the offensive and defensive side, I thought they won, um, and that is the final piece in the puzzle. So we'll see if they can keep doing that because that's that gets real scary real fast for the rest of the AFC. Yeah, if they if they, they start dominating in the trenches <laughs> like that. So so let me get the a let me get the AFC East straight real quick. The Jets are number one, right? Mm-hmm. Then the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Is it? I think it's the Dolphins at one. No, the Jets beat the Dolphins though, didn't oh, they? Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay. So Jets one, Dolphins two, Bills three, Patriots four. Dog, this feels like a parallel universe. I can't lie. <laughs> it does. It does feel a little bit weird. It's it's not. The Dolphins good. are ahead of the Jets because the Jets have had a bye. The Dolphins haven't. Oh, it's their bye okay. next week. So the okay. Dolphins are seven and three. The Jets are six and three. The Bills are six and three, and the Patriots are five and four. So it's not even like the Patriots are our right. scrubs bringing up the rear here. This is the division that we thought it looks like what we thought the AFC West, the AFC West would be it turned right. out to be the, <laughs> the AFC uh, East. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it, it's kind of anybody's game. I, I don't think the jets have the quarterback play to, to win this division. Um, the way that this dolphins offense looks is it's just a total buzzsaw. And I, I think it'll come down to the, them and the bills I'll lean the Bills still win it because I, I do think they're going to get some guys back in the secondary. And I think Josh has had his little stretch of bad play. And I think he's going to turn it around. I think it's this is his floor. Like these kinds of dumb picks and stuff at this point are like mm-hmm. his floor. So I think he's going to get better and, and, and the secondary is going to get healthier. And the, the Bills are going to end up winning this thing. But it's going to be a dogfight. And I'm not writing off any of these teams because it's, it's great division. 
This holiday season, if you're looking for a unique gift that inspires curiosity, travel, and culture, give the gift of Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, you'll finally be able to discover the wonder that comes with learning a new language. I know when I was in high school, I took German, but you know, by the time you're a junior or a senior in high school, you can kind of get burned out of the classroom environment. And I don't feel like I really picked up a ton or retained a ton of that language over the years, but I've been going, getting back into it with Babbel. And, you know, as a college dropout, I've appreciated like, I have a newfound appreciation to like learning things and like getting information nowadays. So it's really been fun for me, honestly, to, to, go through all this and like do something productive with my day and learning a language. And I've got relatives in Germany that I can um, talk to more easily now. So a deeper family, family connection, more to do with my day. And it's fun. It's really been a, a great experience for me because Babbel makes learning a new language easy with teaching methods scientifically proven to be effective. Plus, in addition to their easily digestible 10 minute lessons, Babbel offers podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. And even if it's not exactly what you're looking for, they have a 20 day money back guarantee. So it's no skin off your back. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash stay hot. That's babbel.com slash stay hot. That's all caps, one word, stay hot. For up to 55% off your subscription, that's Babbel, language for life. Let's move over to the NFC North. Uh, an another really like nail biter of a game. Lions and Bears. Justin Fields, man, it, it, he's going to be the most talked about quarterback this offseason because the Bears are going to get all, they're going to bring in all these pieces. They're going to use the assets they, that they've acquired to bring in some receivers. And it's going to be like, okay, now here's the time. Show where us something, bet, Justin. <laughs> where can I bet on Justin Fields being bet as MVP in? 2023 yeah. i think more right. money is going to come in on justin fields to win mvp than any other player like combined <laughs> I, th I really think that that's how high the justin fields hype is going to go so are you guys i, buying I think, that hype? I think there's going to be think, i think uh, there's going to be i think he's gonna be like a lot of hype but a lot of haters i think there's gonna it's gonna be two because there's there's a lot of people where it's like he's getting the running back he's getting he's getting the running back talks <laughs> now Cause well he threw the pick six and then he ran for a seventy yard touchdown. It's like oh he can't throw. <laughs> well, I it, it, it's a little hard to tell because I, I you know broadcast angle you see Justin Fields does right. not get the ball out very quickly. No, ever. Oh my <laughs> no. god, dude. He I, I don't know the stat. I don't even know where to go look. His for time to stat. throw is the I longest can, in the. It's it's I'll find it's it on right next now. gen stats. I promise you right now that it is. I haven't checked like following this game. But it'll be the highest in the league, and it'll be hovering at around three point one seconds. Is probably what it. If you be had around. told me like Zach five, Wilson I would has believe it, man. It's really time to throw oh, at three okay. one two. Justin Fields is right behind him, three oh six. So okay, it's like, I was close. Yeah, I don't know. It, 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 it's tough to tell how much of it is just like the Bears receivers are incompetent. I kind of don't really love the Claypool trade for them still because it's just not someone who can separate and give Justin Fields like a clear like do this to this. It's like, and I like Claypool. I think he's a good receiver, but I don't think it's what they needed. So a lot of the plays that he runs are just like so out of structure. And it's like Fields go do your thing, like go, you know, rush for 150 yards today, please. And he can do that. And that's what you're excited about. But I feel like we're not going to have a real good gauge of like whether or not Fields can do kind of the, the more basic stuff, the simple stuff, like really sitting in the pocket and making key throws until he is put in a position where he has a team around him that will give him those opportunities. But I, I'm excited about him. It's definitely better than he's looked for the first year and a half where it's like, Dude, right. there's nothing. And I, I thought, you right. know, he still had, he had some really nice throws too. But the seeing the consistency of it, and that's what you really need, like we were talking about with Josh Allen, it's going to be hard to tell until the rest of the team is consistent. He's yeah. a really interesting player because of where his throws go. It's, it's his 
breakdowns of where, if you break down where his passes land and where he targets, it doesn't look anything like any of the other quarterbacks. When you think of the most common place a pass goes, it's probably about within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage and in the middle of the field. That's like where mm-hmm. most passes go. Fields has completed going into this game, 14 passes in that area all year. And I think he completed one there today. There is just no quick game over the middle with this guy. And that's not necessarily a, you know, you can win another way. Jalen Hurts is a guy who doesn't really do that either. He's someone who is also, I think, right. notably low in, in, in things like that. And Jalen Hurts is playing very well this season and has the Eagles playing very well, like in a, in a good spot. So it's not something like, but I think it is neat. You need to do it a little bit. I feel like that's kind of where I like There needs to be a little bit of that, that quick game over the middle of the field. And that's where fields hasn't really shown much this year. They haven't really asked him to throw there. What they do is they, they, they play to his strengths, which is smart. And the strengths are the deep bomb, obviously at Ohio state, you think of the Clemson game where he threw, you know, all those deep shots. Like he's very good. He's very accurate with those. And he's crazy fucking fast and can scorch your entire defense so they've played two very man coverage heavy teams in the last two weeks two of the most man heavy teams which are the lions and the dolphins and they send all their guys on deep crossers and goes and they're all their secondary has to get a ton of depth and they're like well fields is either going to hit a deep shot or he's going to run around and by the time he breaks the pocket, there's going to be no one there to chase him down because they've all followed these wide receivers way down the field and it's worked. And he's put up these crazy rushing numbers and he's so dynamic as a rusher. And he's, you know, the way he made guys like the find the fourth and eight today when he made all those guys miss (laughs) and still got sacked, but he made all those guys miss. Like he he's thick. He's, he's bound like he trucks people and bounces off contact. Like he's, like runs a 4.4 and probably even faster at this point. I don't know. He looks like he's the fastest guy in the league sometimes at top speed. So he's electric and he's a big play machine. And against these man heavy teams, I think he's really been able to take advantage of the defense, having their back to him and, and pick up a bunch of yards scrambling. Um, I will be interested to see, you know, as, as time goes on, you know, if, if there's more, more over the middle of the field, short over the, cause it's, it's like crazy low. The, the easy stuff isn't there. He does like all the hard stuff, right. which is good. Cause it should be like, well, the easy stuff is easy. Like eventually you can get the easy stuff and all the hard stuff will be there too. So I'm optimistic about him, but it will be interesting to see like, as we see teams, as he runs into teams that don't play as much, man, they play more zone. They've got eyes on him. They're going to spy him more, you know, is he going to be able to, to, pick apart these zones more than, you know, run around and, and throw to guys running away from people and, and, you know, scramble and man. And I don't, I don't, I don't want to say he's been playing bad or anything like recently he's been taking gigantic steps, I think, but, and they're playing to his strengths. The offense like makes more sense to me watching it now than it did at the beginning of the season. So I definitely like where he's going, but I'm maybe touching the brakes a little bit on, um, on on him as a you know top ten quarterback in the league. Like <laughs> well, well, that's saying. that's just that's just Twitter talk. I agree that you haven't seen the full package yet, and it's definitely like, and understandably so. You don't need a guy to be perfect after his second year, but you got to see the serious signs of of life, and you're seeing that with Fields. So I am excited because again, we were. I mean, start of this season, we were like, this <laughs> might be it for him. Oh my god, right. you know. And now, now he's breaking off big plays back to back weeks. I just looked at his rushing chart on Next Gen, and it's hilarious. So <laughs> it's hilarious. It's <laughs> yeah, so funny, but but yeah, I mean, they just gotta maybe maybe the Bears. I mean, they're very close to ending up with like a top two pick. Maybe in a perfect world, they get that and they trade down and they have all these assets and they can go do whatever they need to do to get a bunch of a top flight receivers or whatever. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I think they could be really good next year. You you. If you look at where the Eagles are at this year with the line and the weapons they have, I like Hertz can be or Fields can be Hertz. He's right, very yes, close I to agree. being Hertz right now. And so if you can get like it's hard to just go like get AJ Brown and Devontae Smith and the best offensive line. It's right. not going to happen in one off season. But like you look at what the Dolphins did, right? And like 
they traded down from a top five pick or whatever it was for the, the, the third pick in the draft. So they could get, um, so the 49ers could go get Lance and they turn that into Tyree kill and they turn that into Jalen Waddle and Bradley Chubb. Like the bears are at a position with all this cap space and, and a very high draft pick where if they play their cards, right, they could surround a very dynamic player with very dynamic <laughs> players and they could turn this thing around fast. And I'm hurts. And the Eagles gives me a lot of optimist optimism. Cause I think they're, they're they are similar, similar styles of players here. And if the Eagles can be eight and zero with Hertz, the the Bears can certainly build a an eight and zero team with Fields if they play their cards perfectly. Right. Yeah, if they play them perfectly. But it's like we haven't talked got- about the Lions in this game, who won, yeah. which is kind of funny. Uh, shout out the Lions too; they were a little bit more boring. Um, I know, I know, a lot of people will be dying to hear me say that I thought Aiden Hutchinson had obviously some splash plays. I don't know if he was consistently. The, the play where he chased the guy down for the backside was a crazy impressive tackle and, and speed once he got there. The get off, you didn't have to beat anybody, but he did have to like chase a guy down and then make that tackle with perfect technique on the goal line. He did, he did that. Um, I'll have to see the all 22 to see if he was actually like beating people with moves, which is, I think, something he's struggled with a little bit this is rookie year. So we'll see. But I know Lions fans will, will want to hear my thoughts on him. But uh, Goff had some absolute dimes in this game over the middle of the field, like in tight windows, perfectly in stride, like towards the end of this, that just ripped the Bears' hearts out. And, you know, it just goes to show you that even system quarterbacks can – rip some really impressive throws over the middle of the field against the bears defense yes i mean golf golf is prone to those kind of it's it's weird every every other week every other week we get a golf master class but you have to worry i don't know if i'd call this one a master class but he 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 made some crazy throws he made some very good throws We're, we're, we're getting into the territory of there are a handful of teams at this point where you have to wonder are they winning too many games we talked about this with the panthers you need a goddamn quarterback (laughs) <laughs> Detroit, stop winning. Them. Panthers, stop winning. <laughs> like uh, uh, Houston, like wh- what are you guys doing? I mean, well, Houston, he, Houston is he, the, yeah. the one seed by a game and a half right that's now. That's true. That's true. They're gonna. I mean, I, 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 I think they're very, very good odds to have the number one overall pick. Here's and something. They're gonna, interesting. And they're gonna get Bryce Young. So probably, you know, the Raiders have the second overall pick right now. Mm-hmm. Who's trading up? Carolina? Who's Detroit? trading up? Or... No, 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 no! It's thinkable no, when you have the no, opportunity. No, you don't no. get the second pick every year. You cannot, you cannot... Derek Carr has given his heart and soul to this organization. I think ultimately... Does that mean any... Play? Has he ever won a playoff game <laughs> in his life? I... I don't think so. If he's if he's given it all he's got, and this is it, I mean, <laughs> think about what we're saying. Yeah, <laughs> I think ultimately, I like a lot of the other the Devontae teams. Adams things makes this so interesting. I don't think they can. The reason they have Adams is because Carr is yeah. there, and that is why I think. So what you trade both they Carr won't and Adams? Pick a quarterback. No, they're not gonna. They're not gonna <laughs> fully blow it up. And, and Adams, Adams' dead cap hit, I'm sure, would be like fifty million dollars. I my guess would be for the quarterbacks is that the Texans end up with either the first or the second pick and take whoever they like between Stroud and Young, and then it'll be some team because like maybe it's the Jaguars. Well, they're not taking a quarterback. Maybe it's the uh, the Raiders. Well, they're probably not going to take a quarterback. Some team like that, or maybe the Eagles, or who knows? Yeah, they they're currently projected to have the fourth pick. Right. I, I think that team ends up trading with the Lions because the Lions have two first round draft picks. And the Texans and the Lions are maybe the two teams in the NFL right now that absolutely must get a quarterback. They have to get a quarterback. They have no other option. With the Panthers, it's like, oh, if it doesn't work out, we're going to roll with Corral, I guess. And that's what they will do for sure. With uh, maybe, maybe there's some other teams out there too. But like you could say, like the Giants really need a quarterback, but they're just not in position. Like they have no play to like the first overall. Do they need pick. a quarterback? Because you know they're seven and two with, I guess, no quarterback. If you want to, you know, 
put that label on Jones, who's probably playing like a quarterback. Maybe <laughs> if, if, you play, if you want to roll with Jones until it eventually catches up with you and you're like, dang, we should have invested in another quarterback. Go for it. I think it's a horrible idea. I think, yeah, I, I think, I think a lot of these quarterback, a lot of these guys are like not going to go in the top 10. Like, I think it'll be just Stroud and young. And I honestly wonder if Stroud does not go and win soundly against Michigan, if he doesn't go play well in that game, if his stock doesn't start to dip a little bit. But the, like the Levises That's, and the Hookers and the Richardsons, I think they'll be there when the Giants are picking or they can trade up a little bit to get them. I I do wonder about C.J. Stroud's stock because it, it feels like it could drop. I, I, I feel like, I mean, Fields went 11 and Fields was a different caliber of prospect than Stroud was. We talked yeah. about this a little bit today. I mean, it's the same offense. It's the same criticisms about, you know, maybe not being able to pressure or playing. The, everything is stacked. And yeah, it's it's all the same things. But Stroud's arm ain't like Fields' arm. And he Stroud's certainly like can't running. run like him. <laughs> I can tell you that <laughs> for run like fact. Field. But my, my, my problem with Stroud is that he just, he like, He's weird about the pressure and he's not always bad with it. But, but I think me and my friends were talking, I don't know, maybe I said this on the podcast where it's like someone who is good at handling pressure runs into the pocket. Someone who's bad yeah. rolls back out instead. Like if you start, anyone can just like run backwards away from the pressure. Every quarterback in the NFL right. can do there's that. There's no, there's no defenders back there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like that, that's, they're not, by, they're not behind you. <laughs> and, and Stroud has good traits. He does like his accuracy really is pretty great, but I, I think that Michigan Ohio state game is going to be like for the Heisman and millions of dollars and the playoffs. And it's the Ohio state Michigan game. It is going to be absolutely massive. It's going to be game of the year. Hopefully it should be a great one. Hopefully it, it's almost yeah. always a great game. So Stroud is a lot more like Mac Jones than people think that he is. He's just in that tier. He like same thing with Jones at Alabama. Like he is really accurate and throws some of just the most like place. He places some of the most beautiful balls that you'll ever see in your life where it's like, what was that window? The motion was gorgeous. Everything about it, the mechanics, all of it just places it perfectly. It's consistent. It's repeatable. He's six foot three right? That's good. He's yeah. got some maneuverability. I mean, we saw him rip off a, a 44 yarder. I believe it was, um, I don't know if it was this week, but it was the week before is he, he ran a, a good distance against Northwestern. Yeah. So he's got a little bit more wheels than I think like he doesn't, then he lets on sometimes and definitely more than Mac Jones and like the, the Jared Goffs no, of the world. What about the, but to Rod, me, what about I, the touchdown Mac Jones had in the pro bowl where he hit the gritty? <laughs> that's true. He did hit the gritty. Uh, but I do think that that Stroud and I think that NFL evaluators are going to, it's going to become more and more of a thing is, is a systemy guy and is maybe a Mac Jones caliber guy when it comes to like the draft and Mac Jones went like 11th overall. And yeah, it'll be, it'll be very interesting to see what the lions do with their quarterback situation because would they want a guy like Stroud when they have a guy like golf already? Or would they say, we're going to take a guy like, Anthony Richardson and we're going to see we're going to see what he can yeah. do in, you know, that golf can't because we already have golf. And if Stroud is just going to be systemy, you know, we've got to sit. We've, we've had enough of systemy. We want someone who, who can raise the ceiling on this thing. So it, I'm fascinated to see what the lions will do. It wouldn't shock me if, if they go with a guy, a toolsy guy like Levis that falls to them and, and they don't trade up for Stroud. I don't, I don't think anyone is going to trade up for Stroud. That is my take. I don't think he is. I think that his his stock is going to be Mac Jonesy by the time the draft runs around. I think Bryce. Right. I think Bryce Bryce is going to be the guy who goes number one, and Stroud yeah. falls a little bit. So we'll see if the what the Lions do if they want if they like their system and they like their system guy, and maybe Stroud doesn't turn it. He's got a little bit more note mobile, and he doesn't turn it over as much as Goff. If they think that's that's all they need, then. That'll be interesting. And if they want a tools your guy, that'll also be whatever the Lions do. It'll be interesting. So oh, I'm sure that's, it will that's be. kind of my thoughts. Yeah, I, I'm not but sure. I don't think they're winning too many games. That's where I'm at. I think I, I don't think they're winning too many games. I don't think you can win too many games if you're no, Campbell. It's not like you're, and you're he, actually winning too many games, but like you just have to worry a little bit. 
as a fan. I like liter- I disagree with this so much, dude. This is not to me, the correct you're take. With with that, you can you, you can win too many games. Yes, you can. If you win so many games, where you cannot get a top tier quarterback prospect, you have won too many games. If you're a bad team, you won. You've won. Yeah, but you as a, may as a have coach, won too many games t- from an I- ideal situation. But it's if you're if you are Campbell and people are already starting to call you overrated. Oh, he's just a likable merchant, and you know he's just a rah rah guy who uh, can't actually win. And you're going to lose the locker room, and all of a sudden, what are we doing all this like toughness for? If it doesn't translate to anything, right. you you eventually have to string together some wins. And how you are you going to how are you going to do that some... without a great quarterback? It's yeah. If if you're this is the thing you trade up. I, I, you I understand up. You got the two argument. First round picks. I understand the argument for like the culture of winning. Like there's a difference culture wise between winning one and like six games. Getting the quarterback, getting your guy a quarterback infinitely more important. I, I, I yeah. can tell you this because my team has won those five culture games three years in a row. It does yeah. not help. They have Matt, not gotten I, a quarterback. I think the still taken problem. fields. I think the they biggest could have, problem. You could have still taken fields though. And I think that's the, I think, and this is so much projecting that it's not even funny and it shouldn't be what the Lions are doing. But I do think the Lions might be in a situation where like the Panthers were and they didn't do it. They might be in the t- like the, at the back end of the top ten, and I think there's going to be a quarterback there. I don't think this is the class where it's like, holy shit, there's Trevor Lawrence. Oh my god, it's Andrew Luck. You're selling your chance at Andrew Luck. Like there's Bryce Young, who's a good prospect, no doubt. But outside of him, like there's going to be toolsy guys at like nine, ten. There's going to be the, I think That's Stroud, true. like Mac Jones, is going to be there at nine or ten. So I don't think this is the year. It's not like the Jets when they won that meaningless game and all of a sudden everyone thought they were getting Lawrence all year. And you can, this isn't like, well, they could have had fields the idea, too. like the prospect, they could have had fields too, they but um, I'm fields. talking about like Lawrence, the idea of Lawrence is like a generational prospect. And it's not like, Oh my God, you, you sold your, 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 your chance at a number one overall pick a once in a generation a once every 10 years. Like this is the best prospect that we're going to see the entire decade type of guy. Like that's not in this class. So I think like if you're going to win too many games, like it's not it, to me, it's not like you're selling. If you sell your shot at Bryce young, you or, or not Bryce young, CJ Stroud, you sell your shot at CJ Stroud. Like I just don't view him in that light. I would rather win games than tank for and really any of the quarterbacks in this class. Cause even, even young is like, probably his ceiling is probably not even as high as like Kyler and Kyler has never been like an MVP. So it's not, even not, I don't even view him as like a generational prospect, even though I don't, I, I do like him. So yeah. I don't think the lions have won too. Also, games, also Matt, the Panthers have not had a rebuild go nearly as well as some of like the Texans who have two first round draft picks and the Lions who have two first round draft picks. If the Panthers had two first round draft picks, you would be perfectly fine with them. If, winning if some the Panthers games. had a quarterback, you would not be saying anything about our rebuild. The team is actually pretty good. It is pretty good. You're right. I've, I've loved if, how you guys have drafted, but yes, we have, we have a lot of draft picks. We have a great offensive line. We're probably a receiver away from having really good weapons on offense. I don't think the Panthers rebuild is that bad. And I think, yeah, passing on, as if, far if as we had Justin Fields good. right now, you'd say we had an amazing rebuild. So I, You're right. I, I actually, you're right. If you, I, if you, I, if you, if you drafted well and, and had two for, or had two first round draft picks. If we then, had, if we had taken not if we had drafted well we have drafted well that's yeah I can't even Derek say Brown J C well. Horn yeah Icky, if you had drafted a quarterback if you had drafted you a, need good a quarterback, quarterback you have to take the quarterback position seriously and I think it's easier to do when you have a high pick I'll agree with the lines to some extent that you know it's not Bryce Young or nothing but I also kind of disagree with the premise of like well they just need a toolsy guy Will Levis or Hendon Hooker or Anthony Richardson well. Yeah. Well, hold on. They're not all going to be good. You have to get like the one that is good. It's a little bit more right. complicated than that. But when you have two first round draft picks and none of those guys are going to go be like the second pick, you would think, although you never know. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. But could I don't know. I, I just don't. Get I always Jones. think it's good to win games like the Packers had a top 10 pick, but I guess the Packers aren't in a rebuild. So they're just, you know underwhelming yeah the packers won today they're not in the top 10 anymore I'm, i I'm think it's i think won. it's real awful to win games me personally but <laughs> <laughs> uh the boys played the boys the boys show. boys had a good game but they they, they won you know that's all <laughs> they, they played well um what else is on the itinerary here? uh broncos titans man 
Oh my god, dude. Those yeah, are it's Russell Wilson. We can. We can <laughs> hmm? We can we can close the curtains on the Broncos season. There was maybe a chance even going into the like we could do it before really, yeah. But they did have a bye week. They are coming off a win. It's like well maybe they can, you know, at least stack something positive to end the year. Nope, no Jeffrey Simmons for the Titans, and you still just play a horrible offensive game if if you're Russ and yeah and Hackett and all of that. It's I mean, what do you do? And that's the question that, I want to pose to you there guys. There is like, what do you no play? Do? You simply have a quarterback <laughs> who is not that great, okay? But you're also paying him huge money. The cat. This is the exact opposite of what you want to be doing. This is the exact <laughs> opposite of like the the winning formula, which is great quarterback on rookie deal. You're doing the opposite. You also are missing first round draft picks, and your team is not like they have a pretty good team, but it's not so dominant around him that. Like you can go and, and and just figure it out. He he limits he limits your offense in such a way where it's just going to be weirdo stuff. I think you fire. I think you fire Hackett just for like the sake of like, well, we got to try something. But ultimately, right, you have to get off of the rust deal, and ultimately, yeah, you can't do that. There you is no out. You can't. And this is a a really bad year for free agents too, because they're not in a horrible spot cap wise. All, like they've got a good defense, and the defense isn't crazy expensive at the moment, um, because they've got Sertan on the rookie deal. They've got you know a bunch of edge rushers who are on reasonable deals, and like it's 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 nothing crazy there. I think they're 16th in the league in cap, about middle of the pack. So it's not like they're the Saints or the the you know not even the Buccaneers anymore because they're going to make the playoffs. But it's not like you're the Saints where you have no answers and you're 70 million below the cap. Like they do have some cap to make. And I would say like fire hack it, make a sexy head coaching hire. Uh, whoever the, like the biggest name is like, go get them, go get someone from the. But the thing is with Russ, like he doesn't play. He doesn't yeah. play in any system. He doesn't, he just shoots moon balls and like not right. scrambles all around. Like, like it's like, what can you, what can you do? And so then it's like, well, get, replace the coach and then just sign the best free agent you can. Like, I don't know who the best one is, but like, like go get, go get that guy. Go get, you know. You gotta, tr- you gotta try and there convince isn't Odell anybody. to be a Bronco. You gotta you gotta try and convince Odell to be a Bronco. That doesn't even move the needle. It's like it's like who on <laughs> offense is the biggest free agent name? It's like Orlando Brown, terrible. Jack Conklin, like maybe go get Jack Conklin. Russ's sack rate is still gonna be high. Like I Nelson Aguilar. Like it's it's a horrible wide receiver class of free agents. They have no first round pick. So the only answer is just they have to fire Hackett. They must fire yeah. Hackett. Hackett is yep. not, he is not the guy. He, his end of his, there's two parts to being a head coach. And that is like Monday to Saturday when you are just kind of a CEO overseeing everything. You are, you know, a team leader and he's not good at that. He just doesn't have the the right mentality. He doesn't have the right demeanor to be a head coach. No head coach in history is as all shucks, happy go lucky, like substitute teacher that like Hackett is that. And, and I'm sorry, I've said it a million times and maybe it's mean, but he's just not the type of personality that you want as a head coach. He's just, he is, he's just this goofy guy. He's a goofy right. guy. He's calling touch. He's like, we got to score more touchdown or Like that's probably a direct <laughs> quote from him. That's not an exaggeration. <laughs> that's what he calls right. them. That's like what he says to reporters is like, we got to go get some more, those touchdown Touchdown to Rooney's like Han Solo and Star. Like you, okay, you've got to be a Solo scheme. was known for his touchdown to He's <laughs> yeah. making a point. You, if you're gonna, if you're gonna act like that, you need to be just a monster. Like in game decision making, ski, like everything has just got to be like perfect for people to respect you. Right. If you're gonna be that cringe, and he's the worst in the league at that in like in game situations and decision making. He's just the worst. There is the Broncos have a new owner. They've they've they it's new everything next year. Yeah. They've set out the memo, new uniforms apparently in the next two years. They're doing like focus group testing on that. It's it's everything new. We're gonna revamp everything. Move on from Hackett and hope to fucking God it works. Because that's the you you keep the defensive staff around if you can, because the defense is balling out. There there's 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 reason to believe you can turn it around. You've got a, a really good defense. 
You've got a, an, an offense where it should on paper, there's more to coax out of this. So you would hope just by changing the coach, the defense and some better play out of Russ or, or maybe getting a, you know, a, a better wide receiver than Cortland Sutton as your wide receiver one, who's, you know, a fine player, but you know, maybe they can, I don't even know because they don't have a first round pick, but you just yeah. got to fire hack it. That's that is the only explanation and, and hope to fucking God. Yes, but I do think it comes down to like, it's not even that Russ is bad. It's that he's bad and it's like, it has to be his way and it cannot be within a system. And that makes it so hard to work around that. It's, it's, it's tough to imagine what you're going to do because I, you know, I feel like they already have like, I don't know, the roster's pretty good. I mean, you, you that one Cortland Sutton catch today. Shout out to him. It was yeah. really awesome. That's crazy. Um, yeah, he's good. I mean, Judy hypothetically is good if he can. St- I know he got hurt in, today, in, and I don't know how long he's and he can't catch. But like the idea of sort of Judy that. is like, yeah, outside of the fact that he's always hurt and can't catch, he's you know pretty electric. Yeah. I don't know, man. We all, came. Up, all, all we I posed know, the question in the rundown. It's like, what do you do with the Broncos? That there's just not nothing. really an answer. But it, man, this is this is the it's like you fire hack it. Yeah, you have to fire hack if you look at like the Raiders. Right, as a team that like cannot finish games, they beat the Broncos by two possessions. What? It, what is that? If if you are worse at making decisions right, the, the than other a, horrible the, the, like possible, right, one if, if everyone's like, man, like, you might well have to fire McDaniel's. Yours. If everyone's saying you might have to fire the Raiders, goes you have to fire the Bronc. Like you have to. There's n- like, yeah, there's, there's no reason not to. It's the only thing you can do. It is the only answer unless you want to just like a, a, a draft a quarterback round two <laughs> and like bench Russ and just have Yo, a, there, pretend no you're paying shot. the number two quarterback. <laughs> who who did they might, draft uh, like? You wouldn't do that this off season, but like the off season after this one, if it goes the same way, like that might be what you're looking at. Like, man, let's find let's find the sleeper quarterback in this draft class with like crazy high efficiency and out of structure rate. It's like, huh, maybe he could be pretty good and we'll just mock him. And I guess maybe the the other thing that happens is and maybe this is where the direction they go is they just focus on the running game as as much as humanly possible. They they spend all their draft pick on interior linemen. Javante comes back and say, Russ, you are throwing, this is going to be like rookie year Russ when you had Marshawn Lynch. We're at the bottom of the league in in throw rate, just the dead last (laughs) bottom. And when we do throw it, it's going to be play action. You're going to roll out and you're going to throw a deep bomb to Cortland Sutton. And this offseason, we're going to do everything possible. We're going to fire our head coach. We're going to hire Jeff Saturday, and we are going to <laughs> run the damn ball and keep the ball out of Russ's hands. Hey, like, shout out Jeff Saturday. Shout do. out Jeff Saturday for getting, a, for getting the win today. Interim head coaches, man, in their first game. It, the, the, it the doesn't sequel. always work, but it works. It's like the Anchorman quote. 70% of the time, it works, it works every, time. every time. I'm telling you, the nothing scarier than The sequel of that drunk conversation. Coach. <laughs> with the owner bro i told you we could get it done ursay's <laughs> ursay's popping bottles tonight 100 <laughs> yeah no they're they are they are blackout drunk right now i guarantee it to be completely honest with everyone i did not watch this is one that i could not i did not get around to because it's raiders Colts, and yeah. like as funny as the saturday story is like i does it really matter ultimately Colts. how will this end does i really feel matter? like i have a pretty good <laughs> <Yeah>. idea <laughs> the colts are maybe a team that are winning too many games Matt. i'll give you that <laughs> matt no, ryan, hey, no, matt ryan. You, know, you know how many you have to understand how many years in a row i've heard this is great we say as we like win our last game of the season and move from the second pick to like the eighth and ruin the entire team forever no i'm sick of it so it's i'm yeah, team culture cool. overrated Give me, <laughs> give me <laughs> dysfunctional talent over team culture. So we'll figure out the culture another time. Let's get good first. But it did seem like Matt Ryan played his one of his best games of the season in this one. Against, yeah, no, he looked. Um, pretty there's solid. four. There's the bottom four defenses in the league are the the Bears, the Lions, and the Browns. Um, those are three of the bottom four, and I'll, I'm not going to say that anything about that and then the other team is the raiders so like yeah matt maybe saturday or maybe some team culture thing can make it so 
if Ryan has a renaissance the past the next eight games, you can bring him on for next year and hope he plays like this. I have no idea, but or maybe some of know. these this is like, like more games, of what it was supposed to look like. So this this knows. will be great teaching for Sam Ellinger to come in next year and be the full time starter. Yeah, there we go. He just needed a little bit more time. Right, he just needs more time. <laughs> but it's a little more time. <laughs> I think that pretty much wraps things up for us. Thank you all so much for tuning in. As always, tons and tons of content coming your way on all platforms. But yeah, I don't have anything else. Matt, Theo, unless you guys have anything else. Shout out Christian Watson. All right, <laughs> shout out Christian Watson. Go Pack Go. Uh, the, the Cowboys thought we were bitch made. They played more man coverage against the Packers than like any other team ever. According to Next Gen Stats, like their hover one rate was like hilariously high. They did not respect us. And Christian Watson is simply too fast. All right, that guy, and he made mistakes today. He he dropped two bad balls, and he had he could have had four touchdowns today if his ball tracking ability wasn't so like yeah ungodly. There was bad there was one like, he play. literally like, looked up. He literally looked up and like watched l- looked for the ball, and he like didn't see it, and then it was coming, and then like it was just totally out of sync. And then his his hands, he like tried to catch it with his hands, like yeah. out of. They weren't like together there. I was like, what do you do? Like, I, I, why I'm, can you not track the ball sometimes? I, I think I, but, I think I, I think I'm starting to figure out, like I watch his head when he's like tracking the ball. And I, I feel like he's watching Rogers to like see when Rogers throws the ball. Yeah, I, I don't know what he's looking at. at I think he's like looking t- back to that, see if Rogers has thrown it yet. Instead of just like anticipating yes. that it's going to be right, here. Right, right. <laughs> and he just he, he had some issues. He's just like game, late, but that just to like react to the ball. But that just the air. but this shows his potential. He is so fast that he just runs away from guys. Like you're gonna play man coverage on him. He's gonna get open eventually because he's just he's six foot five and runs like a four point two. So he's very raw right now, and he hasn't been healthy. But already a, a big game from him. Three touchdowns, torching man coverage. Like I get that there's. You know, it wasn't there was a, a bad missed call at the end, and that's just the Lambo yeah. tax, and people have to get used to it and stop whining about it. Um, yes, the Packers get all the calls. No, I don't care. Yes, I know that they do. It's just <laughs> it's the Lambo tax, the buddy. Lambo it's t- like the it's just the Lambo tax. Yeah, people are everyone's gonna have to get used to it. People are like, Oh, Theo, the refs gave you the Packers the game. And it's like, well, we're the that's why it's not that's why, but we're the most successful and historic uh, team in the NFL, and we deserve some of these calls. Bro, <laughs> like, yeah, of brother course has they do, the Lambo tax. Aaron, Rod- you're telling me Aaron Rodgers has the Lambo tax and only has one ring? Mid. Well, the Lambo tax, yeah. The, the other Lambo Mid. tax is impi- in, employing an idiot as a defensive coordinator. <laughs> so that's the other Lambo tax. Okay. But, um, okay. You would, you would think those would cancel <laughs> out and you would just like, you would, but, they, can, they don't quite cancel out, but, okay. um, yeah, I, I, I just want to give Christian Watson some flowers because not only did he have a good game today and showed his potential, you know, he also could get so much better. And that's, that's, that's kind of a scary thing to think about. So shout out the Packers for winning this one. I'll see them in Lambeau versus Tennessee on Thursday. I will be in attendance awesome. to that game. The I, first game I've been to since I believe, Josh Allen's debut in 2018 was That's against cool. the Packers. And I th- I was there. Josh Allen played horrible. I'm glad I didn't have TikTok in that time period because I would be, Bills fans would be on me for what I said about Josh Allen in those years. So, <laughs> it's okay. yeah. Anyway, shout out Green Bay. I don't think I've talked to them shout at all. Um, and cry about the refs. I'm aware that the refs give Green Bay calls at Lambeau, but it's just the Lambeau tax. And if you're franchise had like the most wins in the history of football you would get it too but your franchise is poverty and it stinks and it's not i know the, theo i know my Bay oh, you don't have to remind me theo i, I know <laughs> oh theo you tweeted something today where you said that european crowds are better than american crowds that is code for your college football team sucks i'm afraid this is why you think no that it's afraid. not yes it is no it's code that yes, you have is. not watched enough soccer okay the, I think it's code for American cities. No, no, no. I think, I think the real problem is that American cities are impossible to maneuver and people would rather leave in the third quarter and dry. And like, no, it's a, it's code that Americans are too, are too just 
cringe and they don't <laughs> perform well in crowds. Look, there's no songs about CJ Stroud that Ohio State who, has, who all right? Cares? There's no songs the song, about Marvin the, Harrison. The so, the songs and the flag, there's not shooting off flares, singing like custom songs for all their players, waving like flags the size of like a two-story building. That's what you get in like a Tuesday afternoon game. The Browns have had that. I remember like, the Browns had a flag a few years ago. This stuff does not move me. Now you you go ask yourself, <laughs> where, where are the hundred thousand person soccer stadiums? Where are those? Oh, they're nowhere because they're playing. They're in the Big Ten is where they are. That's where <laughs> because, the big stadiums are. You, because you, in soccer in London, there's the fifth. 15 like high profile t i don't even know the exact number but in london there's a billion fucking teams and they there's not a hundred thousand fans each because they're all like in la if every football team if the entire nfl was located in new york city they wouldn't have a hundred thousand fans there either all right it's look i don't i'm not a football over soccer guy or i'm not a wait huh? a soccer <laughs> over football guy they're both called football. We got them. I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a soccer over football guy. I'm not a college football over soccer guy, but I am a European crowd over American, L American crowd. I'm going to go to Lambo in Tuesday and I'm going to get told to sit down. Yeah, that's, uh, that's just a Lambo thing. This is, and this is my line. point again. If you, if you went to Ohio State games growing up, you would not. Think it's probably this. electric. It probably gets close, but it's not. Oh my like, God. It's, it's, it's not. But we like don't Europe. sing little it's songs. Like oh, Europe, oh, there's no <laughs> songs. Except we off. do. Except we do. Hang on, Snoopy is 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 yeah. a classic, and and there's the O H I O chant going around yeah. the whole stadium with a hundred thousand people. But since I'm sure it's but since, I'm sure it's, it since we don't do this one player by player song tradition, because although couldn't I say that that's because there's fifty three players on a roster? Well, and there's, there's only like five good ones worthy of a song. Is there you don't need how a much song player for, movement for is there? How much player movement is there in European soccer? None. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you can like literally just buy and loan and like not any time because there's transfer windows. But this is it. This is you don't know enough about soccer. And I don't. I, I don't know. I'm not a about soccer, soccer super fan. I, I know about. I know soccer, about the chance. I've seen that before. I'm not blading with baseball here. Hey, now, <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much for tuning in. Tons and tons of content coming away on all platforms. Make sure you tune in to our live stream on Tuesday. We'll recap the rest of the games that we didn't get to here, as well as the Sunday and Monday night games. But until then, as always, from Corn Boy, Bird Boy, and Lemon Boy, we will catch you all on the flippity flop. <laughs> <laughs>